electric motor, synthetic rigging, classic sailboat, no electronics, crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. We have reached the 1,000 mile mark in our passage. And that puts us in the middle of nowhere. So we have 1,011 millibars, which is kind of where it's been. So it's not changing much, which means steady winds. It looks pretty good. We got blue skies, we got some clouds, and we have a lot of wind. The good part is we finally made it out of that current. So the, on the ocean, currents are like roads. They just run everywhere. And sometimes they're charted, sometimes they're not, sometimes you didn't know it was even going to be there. When you learn how to see currents on the sea surface, then you can spot them. And the nice thing, they are like a road, like you are on the road or off the road. And you can be right next to the road and not be in the road. And the same with currents, like they have a line of demarcation where they start and stop. And thankfully, we were only a little bit into the current, so we just changed course, sailed a bit north, and in a... I don't know, like seven hours we were out of that current. So we just kept sailing away from the current all night and now we have lots of wind and the waves are appropriate to the wind. Where before they were just like these big breaking waves with no wind. That doesn't make sense because current. Here, there's some big breaking waves, but there is a lot of wind. So we're gonna change our course and now we're gonna go due west again and keep making our way towards South America. So we've been flying our staysail and our trysail this whole time and we're going to keep flying them because we are doing five to six knots under staysail and trysail. There's no reason to put up more sail. It's only more stress on the rig and I like to take it easy. It's definitely lunchtime, and uh, it's funny. As we find ourselves kind of running out of fresh food, I was looking in the canned food locker, and we've got all this canned food that we got for our first passage back in the US three years ago, three and a half years ago. So uh, we're gonna finally eat some of that. I'm gonna make this creamy chicken noodle, which looks wildly unhealthy, but also delicious. And in other news, I just saw a Sargasso track and it was going direct, like in our line, like our line of direction. So we are on the correct route to get across the ocean. Yay. Sun is out again today and it just feels really nice to be outside. We've been cooped inside for so long because of the raining and the winds and everything, but it's, it's nice to see blue ocean again, reflecting the blue sky. We hit our thousand mile mark, which is usually very exciting, but <laughs> we aren't even halfway yet. So a thousand miles seems like a lot of miles, but we got a lot more than that ahead of us, which is really strange to think about. Just kind of have to go into a different headspace for that. <laughs> Here we are, oop, flying fish. It's always nice to see flying fish it just makes you smile. <laughs> so we just entered the current again. Uh -huh. So we're going back north. Woo! Ah! It's very choppy and very spray. I'm gonna go inside.
I missed getting our noon sight. So the way it works, when the sun comes directly over you, like perfectly overhead of you, with that exact moment in time, with time and the sextant, you can figure out your exact latitude and longitude. The problem is if you are late, you missed it. You have to wait till tomorrow's to do it. So I, I was washing dishes when my alarm went off to tell me, hey, it's like soon time to go out and do the noon site. And by the time I got out there, if it were correct, we'd be at 11 degrees north instead of eight or nine-ish where we actually are. So it, with the sextant, I plotted us as much closer to the Caribbean and about 480 miles north of our current position. So I know I missed it. So I gotta wait till tomorrow to get, the, get our position again. hard time being outside because I just get so sunburned so in order to go outside I have to cover up like crazy which then gets really hot it's always kind of a game like how long can I be here without becoming a sweaty puddle or uh, burning to a crisp <laughs> That doesn't look so good. No, uh, so apparently we think it's old yeast. And we think old because this is some wrinkly bread. Yeah. It's very sad. I'm gonna eat it anyway. <laughs> Are you? Yeah.
it's been quite the afternoon. We just watched the most incredible dolphin show I have ever seen. I mean, these guys were leaping five, six feet in the air. They were doing that thing where they put their nose up and just stay up with their back fins. They were, they were playing and there were babies, so many babies. It was just the coolest thing. And while we were watching the show, Herbie even ran up and fixed our uh, head stay, which was a little bit loose and bowing. So he got to tighten that. And now we are fishing, hoping for a catch. We'll see. Either way, it was a really cool afternoon. There's nothing like dolphins to bring a huge ear-to-ear -ear smile to your face when you're out here in the middle of nowhere. Another day at sea has come to an end and it's time for me to go to sleep in my little makeshift sleeping area here. <laughs> Good night. Maddie's going to sleep. I got first watch. Mm. And that's it. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Now we've been cooking along at like between six to eight knots so pretty quickly. Oh, that was horrible. All right, Maddie transformed my gross bread into this. Tomato melts. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.